Lesson 5.3c, Contrasting Linear and Nonlinear Data, Bivariate Data. Bivariate data is a set of data that is made of two paired variables. Bi is the prefix for two, like bicycle has two wheels. Vary means change, as in variance, variation, or variety. Bivariate data is two different sets of data that are being compared. If the relationship between the variables is linear, then the rate of change, the slope, is constant. We'll see a straight line. If the graph shows a nonlinear relationship, then the rate of change varies between the points, and we'll see a curve. The slope changed and the line isn't straight. So here's some examples of bivariate data could be a list of the type of bracelet made and the quantity that was sold. We could have a table of income earned and of money spent. We could have a list of the lengths and minutes of videos made and the view count of the videos. We could have a fee table of renting a car from company A and from company B. So here's our first problem and notice they're giving us a table. Dave has two options in which to invest $100. Option A earns simple interest of 2%, while option B earns interest of 2% compounded annually. The table shows the amount of the investment for both options over 20 years. Graph the data and describe the differences between the two graphs. And graph means to plot the points, so we can plot them on the same coordinate plane. Then we'll be able to compare them. So I just want to quickly explain the simple interest and the compounded annually. When it says simple interest, that means they take the $100 and every year they add 2%. 2% 2 of 100 is $2, so over 5 years it would be $10. The $2 times 5 is 10. Now, for compounded annually, what they do is they take the $100 and they add 2%. For the first year, then the second year, they add 2% to that balance. So the balance is increasing each year by a little bit more. For simple interest, we do 2% of $100, which is $102, and we just add $2 each year till the fifth year we're at $110. For the compounded annually, what happens is in year one, we add the $2, that's 2% 2 of $100, but in the second year, we do 2% of this amount. We don't just add $2 like the simple interest, we figure 2% of $102, and we get $104.04. So for the third year, we're going to do 2% of this amount. That's why... When we get to the fifth year mark, the compounded interest has an extra 41 cents because it had a little bit more interest each year. For this year, we find 2% of $106.12, which gives us $108.24. Then we find 2% of this amount. This one just keeps doing 2% of 100 and keeps adding that $2 each year. So the first step is we graph the data from the table for option A and B on the same coordinate grid. So you can see we have option A in the green and the option B in the brown. The second step is to find the rate of change between pairs of points with the slope formula. So we can use the table and for option A, here's our X value and here's our Y value. And for option B, here's our x value and here's our y value. We use the slope formula to find the rise over run, the rate of change for option A, and we get 10 fifths every time we use the slope formula. We can see the rate of change is constant. That means the relationship is linear. We have 10 for our rise and 5 for our run for every single one of these between all these points. But for option B, Look, it changes. We have 
10.41 over 5, 11.51 over 5, 12.69 over 5, then 140 over 5, and the rate of change is not constant. We've got all different numbers for our slope. The relationship between data values is nonlinear. Since we can calculate the value of the account at any time as the investment increases, all points along the line are reasonable or possible. This is why the graphs are drawn as full lines or curves and not discrete separate points. That is why the lines are drawn so that the points are connected because we can calculate the value of the account at any time as the investment increases. We could do it here and say there's a point here. We could do it in between any of these points along those lines or curves and we can just look at the graph to see if the data has a linear or nonlinear relationship. We see this is a straight line for the green one. For option A, we know it's linear. We can see the brown one, option B, is curving, so we know it's nonlinear. Linear means straight line. Lines are straight. If the data lie on a line, then the relationship is linear. If the data lie on a curve, the relationship is nonlinear. We're finished with Module 5, and we're going to be moving on to Module 6. And we're going to start talking about identifying and representing functions. The best way to learn from my videos is to watch every single video, because I slowly layer a little more information on from the previous video. Have a wonderful day, and please join me for Module 6. Bye.